God sincerely calls sinners. We can see it in the tears of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can see it throughout Scripture. There are the most affectionate invitations given over and over and over, bidding sinners to come if they will come. And they must come bankrupt. And we need to press people that way. You come nothing. He wants nothing from you. You don't have to have right feelings. Brethren, it's a deception otherwise. You know why? Because here's here's what happens. Go home and pray that God would give you a new heart. So what do they do? God, give me a new heart. They actually believe that they're being sincere. They won't repent, but they believe that their prayer for repentance or for the Holy Spirit or whatever is sincere. But it's it's not. But you send them, and what happens? Lord, give me a new heart. And what do they start doing? They start looking. Is He doing it? Do I feel it? Do I feel it happening? Do I feel regeneration happening? Lord, give me a new heart. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like if He gives it? I'm wondering, is it there? And you see what you've done when we do this? And if so many people came back and said, that's exactly what I was doing, that this, this is what's been happening. The eyes of the sinner... Where do they need to be in order to be saved? As the serpent was lifted up. You can see that thing being run through the camp. If their eyes were there, they were healed. You send people to do any other thing, and where do their eyes go? Their eyes go on themselves. Their eyes go on other things. Their eyes are no longer on Christ. Their eyes have to be on Christ. Their gaze has to be there. That's what this Gospel is all about. Your only hiding place is in Christ. That's what we were singing about. That's what we know to be the Gospel. Our only hope is in Christ. That is the, that is the Gospel and what He has accomplished. We, we see Him bleeding. We see that atonement that satisfied God. That's where we send them. Their eyes have to be there. It is only in there that they're going to find their hope. It is only in there that they're going to find their salvation. And yet if we do anything, brothers and sisters, we have us a gospel. But that guy that's down your street, for one, how is he ever going to believe in this Christ unless we go there and tell him of this Christ? And if we tell him of this Christ, the last thing you want to do is then go on to tell him something that gets his eyes off of Christ. Don't do that. Listen, we press that sinner. This is your only hope. And if that doesn't work and that's not satisfactory, if the eternal life we have to offer and the heaven we have to offer and the salvation and Christ Himself If, if there's not satisfaction there for the sinner, if, if he's not going to find all of his hope there, give him no other hope. There is no other hope. Leave him hopeless other than that. Doesn't matter. You do, oh, well meaning Christian, you point that sinner to the city of refuge and no other place, and you bid him escape there at once. There's, look, don't let your Calvinism tell that sinner to wait on God. Waiting is deadly. You tell this person to in any way wait. You tell this person into any way just wait for God to do something. Set themselves to pray. What are you, what are you doing? They are enemies of Christ. And you're helping them feel comfortable right there in that situation. Brothers and sisters, how's he going to believe in a Christ that he's never heard? And how's he going to hear unless somebody goes and proclaims? And I I just want to ask you all, that guy that lives down your street, how's he going to hear unless you go? 